Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. On today's program, I'll be teaching from God's Word about the sacred act of worship known in Scripture as tithing. Tithing is the biblical practice of giving God an offering of the first 10% of our financial increase. Tithing will bring God's financial increase into our lives. Join me for part two of the message, Five Lessons on Tithing. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. You have this example in Scripture where Abram met this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High. So if you've ever gone through the Psalms, there are a number of Psalms that are referred to as Messianic Psalms. There are passages that are very clearly relating to Jesus, our Messiah. David was a psalmist. If you really want to know what books of the Bible or what book of the Bible has the most Messianic prophecies about the Messiah, it's really in the Psalms because it's just one after another where there's these prophecies. And then you get into the 16th Psalm and you read about the resurrection for it says in verse number nine, therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. That's, that's hell. That's the holding place where these departed spirits would go. And then the Bible says this, or let your Holy One see corruption You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. But notice, this is a foreshadowing of the resurrection. And it's messianic as well. But now we get to Psalm 110. I'm just going to read all of it. And it's messianic. And it specifically talks about the Messiah being likened to this Melchizedek. Notice, the Lord says to my Lord, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Now, this is a picture of the Messiah sitting at the right hand of the Father, and it's a picture of him being celebrated in in a sense of a reigning king. And it says, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. The Lord sends forth from Zion your mighty scepter, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments from the womb of the morning. And then it goes on to say in verse 4, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. Now he's looking at his own son, Jesus. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at my right hand and he will shatter kings on the day of his wrath and execute judgment among the nations. But I want you to notice this messianic psalm, it specifically says, Jesus, the Messiah, you're a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Why is that important? Because when you give your tithe, you look beyond an usher, you look beyond a local church, you look beyond anything natural institution, and you realize I'm giving this unto the same person that Abraham gave his tithe. It is Jesus who is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So whenever we tithe, we're giving straight unto the Lord. So I said Sunday, God's desire is not that good news would have just, you know, we got four millionaires. Well, include me, that'd be five million. I'm just teasing. (laughs) You know, I had a pastor friend of mine John Miller, he retired from Christ Church here in Yukon. And he said, Tom, before I came to Yukon, Oklahoma to pastor, he said, I pastored in Texas. And he said, we had, a, you know, maybe 100 people or so in this church. It was a smaller community. But he said, we had it in that church. I want to say he had three or four millionaires in that church. And he says, you know, that was the worst thing for that church. Because anytime something came up, like we have a need, everybody just looked over at the millionaire saying, well, y'all step up, do your thing. He said it was the worst thing for the health of that church because everybody thought, 
well, the big guys will take care of this. The idea that I have here is like I said Sunday morning, you know, when Pat Robertson with the 700 Club, he didn't really want to just have somebody originally come in and bankroll it. He said, if I could, Lord, if you'd just give me 700 people that give $10 a month, in his mind, that would be heaven. I mean, I could have 7,000 a month to operate on. It's better to have 700 doing something than to have seven doing everything. Why? Because it gives everybody a chance to grow. It gives everybody a chance to be rewarded in heaven. I mean, you will be rewarded according to your faithfulness. You know, I promise you this. I mean this with all of my heart. There are blessings that have come into my life that I am 100% positive happened because I have been faithful with the tithe. Since I was, my first job, you know, was mowing yards, my next door neighbor's yard, and I guess I was 11 or so, 11, 12. And I had that job, and then, you know, I got other little jobs, and I got a grocery job, grocery store job. Back in the days when you had to wear a necktie and a white shirt to sack people's groceries. Y'all remember the good old days when they sacked your groceries and took them out to the car and that's where I started, sacking groceries in high school. And then I got moved into the produce department. Then I got moved around different areas. But, you know, my point is, throughout the years, I've endeavored to always be faithful with the tithe. Now, this was way before I ever thought I'd be a pastor. But I just had a conviction in my heart, Lord, I want to be faithful. I want to do my part. So we recognize that tithing is something that everybody can get involved in. Everybody can, can do something. Not everybody can give big, but everybody can give proportionately. And you kind of right size your budget, including the tithe. You know, you don't say, well, you know, I'm going to pay off the, I'm going to pay for the car and pay for this and pay for that and get a jet ski and get some boats and get this and that. Oh yeah. Then I'm going to tithe. Y'all, we're going to take care of the tithe right up front. Give me a good amen here. Now here's the second lesson about tithing. So you see that, as you know, Abraham had boys, right? Abraham had Isaac and had Jacob. Jacob had a bunch of boys, right? And you read about these boys, but when Jacob, you read about him, and he, at a time of desperation, was seeking the Lord, running because you remember his brother Esau was looking for him. He had traveled. The Bible says he left Beersheba and had traveled toward Haram. Verse 11 of Genesis 28 says that sundown he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stopped there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against, and he lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven. And he saw angels of God going up and down the stairway. So he's dreaming and he's seeing this group of angels going up this stairway to heaven. Then he sees them coming back down. And he saw these angels going up and down the stairway. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord. He said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather, Abraham, the God of your father, Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you, and I am giving it to you and your descendants. The descendants would be the people that are living in Israel right now, okay? So he says, this land, I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to give it to your descendants. Your descendants will be as, as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions to the west and east, to the north and south. And the, all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. Well, that came through Jesus being born as a Jewish man, right? What's more, I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go. One day I will bring you back to this land and I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. So this is like, wow, I'm running for my life for my brother Esau. I lay down, I have a dream. God makes himself very real to me. He gives me all these promises about my future. And then in verse number 16, then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place and I wasn't even aware of it. 
But he was also afraid and said, what an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven, verse 18. The next morning, Jacob got up very early. He took the stone he had rested his head against, and he set it upright as a memorial pillar. And he poured olive oil over it. And he named that place Bethel, which means house of God, although it was previously called Luz. Verse number 20. Then Jacob made this vow. If God will indeed be with me and protect me on this journey, if he will provide me with food and clothing, And if I return safely to my father's home, then the Lord will certainly be my God. Notice verse 22. And this memorial pillar I have set up will become a place for worshiping God, and I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me. So we see Abraham tithing, and then you see intuitively when he had this very spiritual moment with the Lord, and the Lord talked about me blessing you and me being with you, and I'm never going to leave you until all these things come to pass. It's not going to be a one generation deep blessing, but it's going to be multiple generations. So here you have this story. You have this grandson to Abraham, and you realize what happened. He is, he's blessed, and he wants to bless the Lord's work, and he wants to be a blessing. So I think the temptation for all of us is to think this, is that when I get a lot of money, then I'm going to give a lot of money. Whenever the money just starts falling out of my pocket, you know, and I open my car door and the coins just fall out on the street. But y'all, it's what we do with a little bit is what we do with a lot. It's what you do with little that matters. Somebody said it this way, it's the little things that make the big things happen. Tithers are the most honest people you'll ever meet because it's totally on an honorary basis. Nobody knows. Big brother doesn't know. How many know God knows, but that's between you and him. That's totally a private deal. It's just you and him. Okay, number three. Abraham commenced it. Jacob continued it. And then notice, Moses, Solomon, and Malachi, they all commanded it. In other words, when you read from Moses under the law, you'll discover that he, he commanded it. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30, every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. So the tithe, it's holy to the Lord. So when you look at that scripture in Leviticus 27, verse 30, every tithe of the land, whether it is of the seed of the land or the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It's holy to the Lord. Thanks for joining me for this message titled, Five Lessons on Tithing. Tithing was commenced by Abraham. It was continued by Jacob. It was commanded by Moses, Solomon, and Malachi. It was commended by Jesus, and it was clarified by the Apostle Paul when he explained the ministry of Melchizedek. Tithing will open the floodgates of increase. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.